All right, after logging into your WordPress admin, your landing page looks something like this, depending on your version, because WordPress is constantly upgrading, the look is going to change periodically, and it may not look exactly like this when you get your new website installed. But the first thing you want to notice is on the left-hand side over here is most of your admin features. And these features are where we're going to work today, right along this left hand side is all the different features. So right now we are going to add a post. Right here it says add new. We're just going to click that once and then we have our post page. Now I've already created a post and so I have it already in a Word document. I'm going to copy it, control A, and then that highlights the whole thing then copy it with control C and that copies it into my clipboard. One of the most important things to remember about working on the internet is you never copy straight out of a Word document into your website. You want to do your formatting on the website and there's a lot of hidden code in Word documents so before you paste it on your website you paste it into a text document that you've already opened. So you push control V and that pastes it in there and then you go control A again to highlight it, control C again to copy it into your clipboard and then go back to your blog post, add new post and hit control V. All right, so after you've copied that and pasted it into a text document, you come back to your blog post and you put your cursor inside the text box where your writing goes. Now you could actually write, type right here if you wanted to, but I think it's easier sometimes to format it when you are in your Word document. So you push Control and hold it down and push V and your text shows up in your text document. Now when I typed my document, I actually created my title as well. So I'm going to take that out and add it into my title bar. You could, as I said, format this right within the WordPress. You could actually type right here if you wanted to, but I like to type in my computer and then paste it in here. So I've also created my description. This is for your search engines. So I'm copying my description and I'm going to add it in at the bottom in the all-in-one SEO. So I'm going to paste my description in there. I'm also going to paste my title because this is what attracts the search engines. I've created search engine friendly titles in my keywords and I'm putting my title my description and now I'm going to get my keywords which I had already created ahead of time again you can do this right on my site if you want now your keywords you want to put them over here this is where you put your post tags and then add now what you put in that box was every keyword separated by a comma in this case, Direct Sales Motivational Speaker Series. My keywords are Direct Sales Motivation, comma, Direct Selling Motivation, comma, Direct Sales Help, comma, Direct Sales Business Training, comma, Direct Selling Training, comma, Direct Sales Trainers, comma, and Direct Sales Training, comma. And I've used those words because they're words that are frequently used throughout the article. And so you want to have, I'm putting them down here in the all-in-one SEO pack as well. So you want to have six to ten keywords that are specific to the article and your title uses some of the good keywords. Your article description uses all of your keywords in some form, not necessarily repeating the same words over and over again. Your description you should have between say 160 and not more than 190 words in it but try to cover 
each word at least once that was used in the keyword. So in other words, I've used the word motivation, and I also used motivation in the description. I used sales, and so I also used the word sales in the description. I use trainers in a keyword and so it's also in the description. So that's the way you write your SEO. Now I have my article here but I want it let's save it. And what I want to do is put some links in it and I also want to put some header tags in it or titles in it so that it looks a little bit better in formatting purposes. All right, let's start here. We'll highlight speakers in the park, and then we're going to bold it, and we're going to italicize it. See how I just pushed the B and the I, and it became italicized. Down here, we could highlight Direct Selling Live, which is the website of Keeper. Highlight it, italicize it, bold it, and then so there we have it, two things italicized and bolded. Now we do have other things here as well. We have uh, bullets and numbers. I do have a list in this post about that can be bulleted. So you push, you highlight it, push your bullet tab, and you see that one bullet came. So you backspace and enter, backspace and enter, and it's going to put a bullet in front of each one of your list items. If you push the number button, which is right next to it, you would get the same results, numbering one, two, three. So you just back it up, push it down so it creates a new bullet every single time. Every website has a little bit different type of formatting, so your bullet points are going to look a bit little different. I didn't want this last thing bulleted, so I want to highlight that or put my cursor there and unbullet it and there I want to take that bullet out as well take that one out back that up and there we have our bullet point list alright we have other features across the top here block quotes and things you can just play around a little bit with that the block, block quote offsets it you can write justify center justify there's the link we're going to show you how to do that in a second if you push this little button here it call, it's called the kitchen sink and then a drop down box and you have another row of tools so right there we have a paragraph and now we're going to make it into a header h3 is a header title 3 and that's the kind of thing the search engines are looking for your title of your article is automatically an h2 and your blog is automatically an h1 let's put a link in i have a link right here that i had put in my article let's copy it take it out oh there's another headline let's let's highlight that and make that into an h3 as well your h3 tags make your article look nice but they also attract search engines so we are going to put in a link now so we are going to highlight direct selling live keepers website is where I want to link it to so I'm just going to highlight the part that I want to link this is a text based link I push the chain link in the toolbar and then a little drop down box opens up I paste my link in there you could type it in if you wanted you always and then you select your whether you want it to open in a new window or whether you want it to open in the same window generally speaking if they're leaving the site you use a new window and if they're staying on the site you use the same window because you don't want them to leave your site and close your site so you open your your target frame in a new window if they're leaving and the same window if they're staying on your site if you're linking to another page within your site so we do want to put some title text in here this is for the search engine so it should be in relevancy to your page that you're on, keywords that you're using on your page, as well as also in relevancy to the page they're going. And so this one relates to the article, which is direct sales training, and also the link is going to direct sales training club. So you can see now it's a text-based hyperlink, which is always good for your SEO, as well as for your direction the SEO on the new page and I don't want it bolded so I just highlighted it and clicked B for bold I have some other text links down here and I already put them in 
Keep in mind that a text-based link, as in direct sales training, is always better for SEO than, say, the name of the domain, like speakersinthepark.com. Now, if you want to brand it based on speakersinthepark.com and you want people to remember your brand, then you would use your domain name. But for SEO purposes, text-based links are better for the, the page it's going to and also the page it's going from. Now it's time that we save our draft again, just so that we don't make a mistake and lose it. Push Save Draft, and then Preview, so that we can look at it and see how it looks from the customer's point of view. And then you switch your tab on your screen, and you can see that we have our formatting in place. Our headlines look good. You can see the tech text links as well. Every website's a little bit different. You can see that my website publishes green text links. Yours will probably be blue. But it's all a basis of your theme and format. There's not something that you can change, but we have bullets. You can see that the bullets on my site are a little bit on the fancy side. And the bullets on your site might be plain. Now we have some links that we put in that are text-based. And you'll notice that I also have the .com links. As I said, the text-based links are better for search engines, but if you're trying to brand, you would use your uh, .com links. But your, your links that are text-based should reinforce your titles or your subtitles as well. So this link is Direct Sales Training Club. That's where it's going. But the header bar, uh, the sub subheader H3 above it, has Direct Sales Training in the headline. So that's a really good technique. As long as it's natural, you don't want it to be you know, spammy. So now I'd like to put some pictures in to make this a little bit more interesting. Up here in our toolbox, you'll see that there's different icons for different purposes. And we're going to put our cursor where we would like to have our picture. Let's put a picture in of Keeper. And so we just push this little link over here, Uploads. There's several different kinds of uploads. The video one doesn't look very good, so when you want to learn video, we should have a s another lesson. Um, but you'll see right here, the first one is the picture one. That's the one you're going to use most often. You just click that. And there's three different ways to upload pictures, or to incorporate pictures, I should say, into your post. So this window opens up. And the first choice is to upload from your computer. And so you just push the little button there and select the file from your computer and then push upload. I'm not going to do it because I already have it in my computer. Uh, so the other choices are to bring it out of your media file. Now you can see that I already have a lot of pictures in my media file. So once you've uploaded them, they become part of your media pictures. And there's Keeper. I put him in a picture or in an article the other night, so it's already there. So I just click show, and then it will pop up with the details. And, and you can see that there's a few things to choose from. So I already have the alt text. This is alternate text, meaning for the search engines, it shows up in the background. We don't want to have a link. Uh, you would put a link in here if you wanted it to link to another page or maybe a shopping cart. I don't usually use a link. If you leave that link in there that's default, it will just link to the picture itself. So I usually take it out. We have a choice of using full size. Uh, it's not a very big picture to start with. We can left justify it or center it and then insert it into our post. And voila, there's the handsome gentleman Keeper, also known as Nick Altron, who is the founder of DirectSellingLive.com. Excellent uh, forum. So I was also thinking that we could add a picture of the gazebo. All right, so the other way to add a link to, or a picture, is to go to a website and then click on a picture, right click on it, and then when the drop down box comes, copy link location. And so now you've got your link in your clipboard. You go back, put your cursor where you want the picture to show up, and then push your picture insert button. And when it opens up, select
pr select from URL, paste your URL in there, add your alt text as well, and then push insert. So now you can see that we have two pictures here, and we used two out of the three techniques to insert them. You can upload from your computer, or you can, and that is upload, you just push the upload button, and you can insert from another URL, and so you push the use URL button, or you can go to your media files tab and use a picture that you've already uploaded. All right? So the, either, any way you do it, just make sure you set your alt tags. And I know this seems like a lot of information, but you will get good at it pretty quick. It just takes a couple of posts and you'll know exactly where you're going for everything. All right, the last thing we have to do before we publish it is pick a category. On the right hand side of the screen is the category section. So I have a lot of categories already selected, um, are already programmed in mine. I did program a couple into yours and you just want to pick out a category that's relevant to the topic. Now you can add new categories as you go along and you only pick one category for each article and once you pick a category you shouldn't change it. I mean you can but you really shouldn't because it's the URL. The Later on when the post moves into the archive section the URL is going to be your domain name forward slash your category name forward slash the article name. So you pick a category, one per article, and stick with it. And then one more feature we have before we publish the article. If you do have articles that would you, you would like to not allow discussion, and this goes for your pages as well, down below above C SEO, all-in-one SEO, and below the post content box is a feature where you can uncheck. It defaults allow comments and discussion but you can uncheck it if you do not want to allow comments on a particular page or post. Remembering that a post is an article. I usually allow comments on posts, but not pages, like that would be your about page. If you have a static home page, or if you have a sales page, uh, you might not have comments activated on that. So it does default to being activated. So now it's time to publish our post. If you remember correctly, we pre previously saved it using this button right here, which was the Save Draft button. Now we are going to publish it by pushing this button right here, Publish, and then it will be published. Now you can come back afterwards if you have things you see that you want to change um, and edit it so don't feel like you're like stuck forever you can even change it back to a draft status if you prefer so we'll just push this button right here and change it to published and then here is our finished article as it looks on the website I just have a couple of more quick things to show you before we wrap this little exercise up and we had started out on our sidebar and we are going to go back to the sidebar now and I'm going to show you what a couple of the features are. If you just look at the sidebar from top to bottom you're going to notice that there are a lot of different features there. It's something that you're going to have to play around with as you go along but if you just start at the top and notice we already covered the section on posts that was the first thing we've pretty much covered that in intensely and then you can see that the next one down is media media is where your pictures and videos are stored I wouldn't upload videos to your media files you should put them on YouTube and then embed them uh, okay plugins plugins are features that make your website usable I'm gonna tell you about some more features in a minute. And then the next one down is your users. That's where your user profile is. You should go there and set up some more information on yourself for WordPress. Um, and then when you post on other people's blogs, they would be able to see that. And it also, it, you, under users, you could add other authors and things like that. If you want to have other people 
posting on your website under different names. So after that comes the tool section. You don't have to worry about tools at all. And then in the general settings, under settings, we have general settings. Uh, you should go there and take a look. Um, I have everything set the way I think it should be set. There's reading, writing, discussion, media settings, permalink settings. Don't mess with the permalink settings. That's a danger zone. Uh, we have our all-in-one SEO settings, our EasyTube settings. EasyTube doesn't work very good. Uh, it's really easy to in embed video. Uh, I will probably the best thing to do is to go to www.how to build a website quick and learn how to do it there because it's really easy to embed video. And then uh, your sociable. So you do want to at this point go to the general button there and make sure you have I have the information correct for you and then go to the all-in-one SEO and make sure that you have your SEO set up for your home page. That will be your blog as a whole, the whole purpose of your blog for search engine purposes. And your sociable is when people are on one of your articles and you want them to Twitter it or bookmark it or Facebook it and you have some choices to make in sociable. So I did set it up the way I thought it should be set up and that might be something you want to change. And so the last thing I want to show you is one plugin that relates to your pages. Again, a page is static, it stays in one place, and a post is dynamic. You may have an about page, and then later on you go there and change the about page. You can edit it, and um, you don't add a new about page. So a page, you don't add a new one. Say you had a page with your calendar of events. Instead of every time you have a new event, you could put a post up if you want to put an article about every new event you can do that or if you have a page that lists all your events that page stays there and gets edited periodically so there's a page which is static stays where you put it and a post which is dynamic and a blog is a dynamic website that the, the, the posts move in chronological order so as you can see here this is a page the features are all the same as adding a new post except scroll down below the post con or the page content box and you will see on the right hand side underneath there's no categories and there's no tags for your page is for your admin on pages there is the all-in-one SEO and so over here on the right hand side is uh, remove from navigation and that would be if you wanted to have a page that your customers didn't see a tab for it on your header bar or in your page index in the sidebar. In other words, maybe you have a page that is, say, they buy something and they go to a thank you page. You don't want that in your header bar. Or maybe you have a links directory, which I installed for you. There is a links directory, and I don't have it in the header bar. It is in the footer so that the search engines can find the links, but it is not in your header bar. So any page that you don't want to be in your header bar or in your sidebar page directory you would remove from navigation. Now I brought up a point about your links directory. Link trading or having incoming links to your site is a technique that you can use to increase your authority with the search engines. So I installed a links page and I set up three links out and three links in to start the search engines to see your website as a viable resource. So if you scroll down to the front of your website, down at the very bottom in very small, you will see your links link, your links link, which will take you to your links directory. So when you trade links with a website, be uh, don't be too generous because you're sending out link juice and you want to keep your link juice, but you do want to trade. So when you trade, you trade in a th three-way manner. In other words, I gave you three links in, and you linked out to three different sites of mine. And that way, three of my sites got link juice, and three of your sites got link juice, but they're not reciprocal one for one. They're in a triangle form. Me to you, and then you to a different site of mine. And that's the way good linking works to develop authority for your website. So this is the end of your tutorial. I'm sure your mind is boggled and we can have a small chat but the best thing for you to do is to 
practice, practice, practice. So thank you for allowing me to be your WordPress installation expert.